Conductor Ivor Setterfield is facing the biggest challenge of his career. He's come to an Oxford housing estate to find the raw talent he hopes to transform into a classical choir. And you! But after two weeks of slow progress, the choir are beginning to show the strain. Oh, God! And in just six more weeks, they're due to perform at London's Royal Albert Hall. But can Ivor turn his group of amateurs into the singing estate? Until two weeks ago, the Blackbird Lees housing estate near Oxford was more familiar with hip-hop than Handel. But recently, that's all changed. With the creation of a classical choir. Now all around the estate, homes are swapping karaoke for Carl Orff. One family infected with the classical bug is that of 20-year-old Candice and her mother, Julie. As a choir member, Julie will be singing at the Royal Albert Hall, but Candice is only an understudy. It's hard not to feel sour about it. It's a really hard, without wind, it, and it sounds like as if we're winding, but for them, they've got so oh, much yeah. to look forward to. Have I'm that. trying to work twice as hard to say, hold on a minute, I made a mistake, but please let me in. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's rehearsal night at the community centre. Ivor's got six weeks left until the Royal Albert Hall concert, but his novice choir are still struggling with the basics. You have to follow my tempo, please. Follow my tempo. Mine, mine's different every time I do it, but you need to watch me. Two, three, or one. Quite a lot of the people in the choir have no idea what I'm doing. I think some of them think that I'm just waving my arms around for my own pleasure. Hopefully, we can find some, um, some situation where they, it's made abundantly clear to them that what, what, what a conductor does. For a crash course in classical singing, Ivor feels it's essential for the choir to visit Italy, the home of classical music. But not everyone is happy, like bass singer Colin's wife, Kim. And I think you think you're going away for, like, a blast, and I think it would be no, really no, 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 that's wrong. I don't, I don't think that at all. You know I don't think that, because I'm... I mean, look, look at the times when I went on, when I, when I went on the stag do's. Yeah, look at them. Um... When, we when we went on the stag do's, when everyone, else, when everyone else is doing all the other bits of balls, what they do on stag do's, I didn't do that. I was, I was going round to all the old town and doing. I mean, I know you don't, I know you don't lost. believe that, but that's true. Huh? She was lost. You were lost. I was not being bloody you lost. Oh, you... you were saying piddled. You couldn't find the bloody. Unlike Colin, some of the 40-strong choir can't go to Italy, so a fierce competition has broken out between the understudies for the free places. At Candice's house, she's been rehearsing every spare minute to try and win one of the spots. If I didn't go on the trip, it would hurt, but in a way I don't think I'd show it. It's a case of having to phone like my mum phoned me and going, so did you get through? And if I say no, to in her eyes, she's going to think I didn't do good enough, which is the sort of attitude that she had. If you want it, work for it. The song's starting to haunt me. <laughs> it's just my voice. I know it's stupid, but I know this huskiness on my voice will not clear till at least 12 o'clock, and it pisses me off. OK, one more time, and then, then we just really need to have a couple of minutes break. At the community centre, it's decision day. Ivor's announcing which of the understudies will come to Italy. Best friends Zoe and Taja both want to go, but there isn't space for all seven covers. 
If I didn't get in, like, to go to Italy, I'd be really gutted because I've never been to Italy, so it's quite quite a big chance there. It'd be, like, horrible knowing they're all there. We'd be yeah. sat at home. I just really want to get there. Could you all four wait outside, please? And I'll call you back in a second. I think that there are a number of covers who would be devastated if I said they couldn't go, and so I've got to be very careful about that. I just want to know, you know, I just haven't gone. <laughs> The girls are about to find out how many of them, if any, I was going to take. The situation is, I know that you're all four in the covers for, uh, for this, the, for the choir. However, um, I'd very much like all four of you to come to Italy if you're a team. <laughs> <laughs> you're going to be singing in the choir in Italy. That's the situation as far as I'm concerned. And, 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 uh... Thank you. Big hug. Well done, girls. Good hug. In a way, it's a lifetime. Life life time. Never going to get it again. I'm 37 years old. I'm not a young chicken. <laughs> I never thought I would even get in the choir. And it's amazing for me. The male covers would like similar news. John, in particular, is hoping to go abroad for the first time ever. This is a, a difficult thing for me to say, but um, at this point, uh, I'm sorry to say at the moment that for various reasons, um, I'm sorry, not, I'm not able to offer you a place on the trip. Um, the, there are a lot of the bases who are actually in the choir are able to go. I'm sorry to disappoint you. For the bases, it's a blow, but Ivor's decision has hit John hardest of all. Living on £90 a week and long-term unemployed, he was desperately hoping for better news. I've got to go. I'll chirp set, all right. I'll see you later. Disappointing people is Ivor's least favourite part of the job. But as the conductor, he is forced to think about the choir as a whole. Although I have confidence in the choir, I'm, I, don't, I don't want to be let down. I, mean, I am a professional musician, after all, and I, I, I have no desire to be made to look an idiot, particularly, you know, in in front of Italians, or in front of anybody, actually. So, will Ivor's Italian adventure inspire the choir to improve? Or will spending three whole days together tear them apart? Please shut up. Everybody shut up. Good morning, good morning. It's 2.30am, and 40 singers from the Blackbird Lees estate are off to Italy to learn more about classical singing. The register's looking really good. We are all here, which is absolutely fantastic. New parents Paul and Ellie have baby Lyndon in tow, but not everyone's invited. John, an understudy, has come to wave them off despite being left behind. How does it feel, me not going? I'm really gutted. Um, don't worry, I won't cry this time. I'm, I'll be all right, I'm cool. Come on, then. We, could, we, could get you, we could actually get you, on, get you over there now, John. Just shove me in there. How's that? Yeah, John, we're smuggling you, man. Respect. Yay. Quality. <laughs> oh, we miss you, John. Isn't that nice? They miss me. <laughs> oh, started it. No, don't do it, John. Don't do it. No. And then there was one. See ya. So, I brought you to Italy. Yay! <laughs> Visiting two cities over the next three days, the choir's first stop will be Milan. But even before they get there, Ivor wants them thinking like Italians. Here, people are just as likely to go and buy a, a record of opera as they are to buy a garage CD. Garage. Garage in it. <laughs> as we go into Milan, I'll try and get a little part of you into into the groove of thinking about music and thinking about singing and thinking about why. This is not necessarily a booze cruise. In Milan, Ivers asked the choir to gather at five to four outside the Opera House La Scala for their first excursion. 
something interesting is in that building. We can feel it just standing here. So we are dying to go in. And the strangest thing is, Iva has disappeared. Iva's heard that some choir members have opted for a more familiar cultural experience. Can you get back to the statue, please? You're a bit late. It's now four o'clock and we've got an appointment. Five to four means five to four, not five past. In order to allow you to go off and do your own thing, could you please do as I ask? Not a very professional start. It's La Scala Milan. <laughs> La Scala is the home of Italian opera, similar in size and prestige to the Royal Albert Hall. Most of the choir have never seen the inside of an opera house. OK, gather around, ladies and gentlemen. I'm just wanting to take you into this building because in six weeks' time, I don't want you to be unprepared about what you've got to do in terms of the fact that the next time you go into a, an auditorium similar to this, you will actually have to sing to about 5,000 people. So I just want you to imagine that this almost very quiet walk into the building is, is as though we're going in for real. So just follow me and let's go into this famous auditorium. In six weeks, we're going to be singing in a venue that looks like this. It's just unbelievable. It's the first time I've been in a place like this, so you can feel the tension, you know, in the air, just, and we haven't done anything, you know? Just one word. Wow. To imagine 5,000 people. It's going to be, it is going to be really nerve-wracking. We're going to have to be our best. It's just yes. really brought it home that, yeah, we just don't deserve to be there unless we're going to put 110% in. But for 19-year-old Mackenzie, whose fiancé is in prison, the experience is tinged with sadness. I'm happy to be here, really. It means a lot. I just kind of want to tell him, just share it with him, and it's hard. Because when you tell him what you're doing, I don't think he gets the full... He doesn't know what... He wouldn't have a clue what this is. He's never been anywhere like this. You know, if he walked in, he'd be just as overwhelmed as I am. And 22-year-old single mum Kay has also been moved by the experience. I was quite surprised that people were very emotional about it, but it's a great building and I think that people are starting to get the idea that singing can be part of their lives. Yeah, it's just overwhelming. You don't think you're... Me, personally, never thought I'd be somewhere like this. And, um, for God's sake. It's just like a flipping dream at the end of the day. And uh, I think our cultural musical trip is having its uh, effect. I think I was absolutely crazy, mental, absolutely bonkers. And that's all I can say. I've got to get on my scooter now and I'm going back. I've got to go for dinner for my mama, you know? So I see you later, yeah? Go take care now and I'll see you back in Oxford. <laughs> The 40-strong choir are arriving at their first hotel. Very nice. Everybody, just to show you your card. Choir member Cindy, chosen by Ivor as his deputy, okay. is in charge of logistics. Just take your key from me, yeah. and then if there's going to be any changes, then yeah, it's sort it out and yeah. let me know, OK? But right now, yeah, right, just do as me. I say, please, so me we can make then. life easy. Is that all right? Oh, it's so bad. Oh, oh my God! Dad. How are three of us going to get in the shower? Do we have the best view or what? Colin, we can't just sleep together. They're just like a couple. Whoa. I just hope I don't hear any noises at night. Them squabbling or doing something else. Because we literally had time to eat. It's only a few hours into the trip, and already there's tensions in the group. Who's, her, who's the lady who's head of the choir? Cindy. Yeah. I know she's got a job to do. No, right? I don't. I haven't got a problem with it. Now. But it's, it, the power just seems to me like it's gone to someone's head. 
Stand, when we go into the hotel, can you all please stand on the right-hand side? What were we going to do? Cause a riot? It's really hard because I don't want to get nobody's back. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I, but at the moment, it's like everybody is bitching. Mm. People are whinging about the most pettiest things. Mm. And I'm just like, ah, la la la. That's what I feel like doing. Shut up, please shut up. Everybody shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up. It's a completely different... Infighting wasn't part of Ivor's team building plan. And downstairs in reception, head of the Sopranos, Claire, has a problem. She might be losing her strongest member, Seema. Have you got a temperature? Have you got a temperature? Yeah, have, yeah. Right, I've got something to keep your temperature down, but you shouldn't take it on an empty stomach. I've just been sick now. I had a really bad stomach last night. I haven't had anything to eat, maybe that's why as well, but I've got a temperature as well. I don't know what I've come down with. On the coach, please! We're running late! On the coach! It's dinner time, and this choir marches on its stomach. But there'll be no more McDonald's for Julie. It's fast food, Ivor style. <laughs> the choir don't realise it yet, but their classical music boot camp is 24 7. And Ivor's mystery guest is an eminent Italian tenor, Franco Malapena. The whole purpose of them doing this is. It's not to just drink, it's for them to understand the culture, to absorb what it takes to be as good as someone like Franco. I mean, Franco's pretty bloody good. OK, ladies and gentlemen, I've been very excited about this evening, as, as some of you are aware. A couple of years ago, I was fortunate enough to meet Franco, and he's kindly agreed to come along and sing to you Franco. classical music <laughs> until Franco stepped into this restaurant tonight. It was absolutely amazing and it made my heart race. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, there is one further very important surprise. You will be singing with Franco. You will be singing O Sole Mio. Oh, Solomio is a song the choir have practiced, but there'll be an English choir singing a classic Italian song to an Italian audience. If I hold that note like he did, it's just more than 10 to... Yeah, hold a pass down. We've got about 14 years of practice before we get that like that. And if we have to hold notes like that, we're in trouble. <laughs> Major trouble. <laughs> they just heard someone, a great singer. Tomorrow they're going to sing with him. I would imagine that most of them were quite scared about that because they're suddenly re-examining whether they can do it or not. And with this in mind, you'd think they'd all be off to bed early. Not very likely. Next day, and some choir members have got up early. 
New dad Paul and girlfriend Ellie were woken by their baby. Exhausted, Ellie is losing her voice. It's making me feel a bit annoyed because, well, I came here to sing, didn't I? <laughs> it's just a matter of sort of just pretending to sing. And hopefully my voice will turn up somewhere. <laughs> She's usually happy and whatever, but she's been a bit moody and she's been upset because of her voice and the old situation. She has snapped at me a few times, but that's because really tired, really run down. Paul's not the only one getting it in the neck. The tired choir, exhausted from the night before, should be on their way to Verona by now. It's vital that if we're told 12 o'clock, we must be down here for 12 o'clock. Some of us are letting down the team. <laughs> Less than 24 hours since the choir left the UK and they're starting to get on each other's nerves. At the back of the bus, Alan, section leader of the bases, draws Cindy's attention to Grantley, who has a complaint. Yeah. On a personal level, I don't feel that I'm being treated like an adult. That is the end of my complaint. Okay. I, um, I, it's not a complaint, yeah, but no. I hope that things get better. There are no, if this doesn't happen, I'm going to do that. I would no, just, just want no, you to know. Fine. That's fine. Yeah, that is, that, is, that is fine. I'm part of this team. Okay, I'm part of I'm yeah. part of you. I'm part of this team. If I could just interrupt, yeah. I think that is one of the problems that I'm having, is yeah. that you no longer feel like a part of this team. Oh, gosh, for I me. am. No, for me. Okay. Just, uh, I, like, I think that's a bit harsh. I think she's a bad <laughs> That's the point. Grantly, no, no, but I, I mean, she's, she's trying to. I, if, but no, Grant, she's, she's trying to do a job. If He's I trying could, to do a job. Like, don't shout me down. No, no, I'm just, saying, I'm saying, just saying. I'm just saying first. No, 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 no. no I just say been, what I've got to say. No, I, I said, said to me, she doesn't. Oh, feel okay. Like All right. Verona, the ancient Roman city where Mozart once performed as a child, is steeped in classical music history. It's an instant fascination to all choirs. Or at least it should be. I don't like this, uh, this hierarchy. As far as I was concerned, when I saw an advert to join a choir, it was to join a choir and not become uh, you know, a member of some sort of um, military-type system. You know? and that's what it is for me, and I'm not, I'm not really happy with it. He felt like he's been treated like a child. Well, um, I don't personally agree with that. He's not treated like a child at all. Um, I think some of the things that he was picking on was pretty childish, to be very honest with you. I don't need to, somebody to hold my hand and say, come on, let's go through checkout and we'll meet at the other side or we'll all go through together. I never want to hear the word section leader again because I'm, I'm walking past and I hear section leader, section leader, section leader. It's just like, give me a break. Section leaders, I need uh, names, please. We need to be on time, and you, you can hear little slight remarks saying, oh, um, it's her again. People from all walks of life are going to act in the way they know how, and guess what, I'm going to do the same. I'm going to act in the way I know how, which is to produce a good job and make sure that this choir and this weekend is successful. With the choir falling apart, what can Ivor do to bring them back into line? And will the group's disharmony have an effect on their singing? Horrific! Ow! The fledgling choir from the Blackbird Lees housing estate have been in Italy for two days on a study tour. Yeah. Head of choir Cindy has been taking a lot of stick from some members over her leadership style, and it's in danger of splitting the group. Do you, do you know what? Sometimes people who, people who have said things to you, because it's not running how they would expect it to run. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm sorry, people have put in place, people were voted oh, into place. That's right. You were asked to do this job. That's right. You know, a very important job to keep us organised, yeah. and it's, it's running brilliantly. At the end of the day, you've got the hardest job here, and I think what you've done so far is good anyway. You've got, you've got my full appreciation for what you've done. Thank you, babes. No problem. But maestro Ivor Setterfield hasn't brought them here to work out their petty squabbles. <laughs> With a big concert coming up in six weeks, they're here for a crash course in classical singing. Today we've come to the outdoor arena, the amphitheatre of Verona. I think that this will really give you the impression of just how much space they have to fill, um, what it feels like to be uh, singing in this environment. Oh, wow. It's dramatic. It's that thing from that film. 
delicious. Oh my god. Oh my god. No, this is gladiator style. If I can give some people a sense of the fear of what they're just about to do, then it'll suddenly make it more real. Just follow me over here, please. Because they've got six weeks before they sing together in front of thousands of people. But if the Royal Albert Hall has steps like these, Julie could be in trouble. I've got a huge fear of open spaces. Um, without handrails and things like that, I can't even do an out a scouter. Listen. With the arena having given permission for only 30 minutes practice, Ivor's keen to get started. Gather in a semicircle. As there is no piano, Siobhan will be an onlooker. Hello, babe. Oh, thank you for calling. Piano's over this side. Alto's over this side. Mackenzie's distracted by a call from her boyfriend in prison back home. I'm on it. I'm on the, on the thing. Okay, I think you'll agree this is a magnificent space. It is in obviously bigger in terms of capacity than the Albert Hall. The feeling is nevertheless the same, but just with a roof. I just want you to get the experience of singing in a space like this. Be good. All right. I love you. Bye. Bye. OK. Could you get out your Zadok the Priest music, please? <laughs> Shh. Concentrate. Everyone here? Now, let's see if we can do this first few bars. Three, and... <laughs> horrific. Absolutely horrific. We've gone huge paces backwards. I, th I think it's partly because I don't think enough of you know exactly what I'm doing. What I'm doing by being a conductor is I'm trying to keep you over a distance in time with each other. Some of the bases go off far too quick. It makes me feel slightly nervous. I'd like you to do me a, 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 a favour. I have a, an experiment. I would like you to follow these instructions precisely. Sopranos, could you please go around the far gate. OK, you should see that one there? Could you go up to that gate up there? Altos, over there. Tenors, that one. Basses, could you go to this gate over there? Puffed out. I don't like heights and it's making me feel sick. You're good, Altos. Well done. Oh, we made it. Colin's in the right place. Very good. Look towards me. Could you stop taking pictures at this moment? I'm trying to, we're trying to do something. Face towards me. Face towards me. Face towards me, marvellous. It's really good being so far away from you. I mean that in the nicest possible sense. Now, all together, I'm going to do it faster, but I'm not going to tell you how fast, I'm going to just beat it. Three, four. Too fast, too fast, because you're relying on what you hear. Absolutely rely only on what you see. Again, I'm going to keep changing the speed. Okay, three and. No! Too fast, Paul! Three and. Isn't it exciting? OK. A dairy shout at me, me, Paul the King. <laughs> Following the conductor and working as a team has shown the choir how good they can sound when they're in step with each other. If you can do that at that distance, I'm beginning to really believe that the Albert Hall is a strong possibility. I was very worried and now I am not so worried, which is a very nice feeling for me. 
That's the first time when we sang, you actually got that buzz in your head. You know when you get that buzzy feeling, so you know yeah, it yeah. sounds right, it just sounded just awesome. And I always used to wonder what conductors did, to be honest, because they kind of pose around, don't they? And I looked him up on the web, and he was posing around, I must say. <laughs> but, um, yeah, it makes sense now. Royal Albert Hall now isn't seeming such like a... No. a problem it's no. like oh can't wait now can't wait to get in there and feel the same sort of feeling because I mean this is phenomenal being in here the feeling oh, you get you, you automatically want to sing it's it's the first time everyone's had a cry off and everything and it's the first time I've actually felt really emotional because um, I just feel I, you know so privileged really whilst Ivor has been demonstrating the importance of a conductor Back in the UK, rehearsing without one is proving difficult. Three of the singers left behind have organised an impromptu rehearsal. One of us could be wrong, the other one could be right, and the one that's right could be wrong. So you could be wrong, he could be wrong, I could be wrong, yes, you are right. I'm OK, all right, I'm in tune, right? Blossom is singing every she can get hold of. But then it makes it me feel as though I'm doing no, wrong. It's fine. Or, or Blossom, who missed the trip because of illness, isn't keen on taking advice from John and Gina, who are covers. I don't care about the criticism. Exactly. I wish they'd leave it for Ivor and Siobhan. Exactly. Because I want to learn this. Because I don't like being told, basically, by covers what to do. It's like being a dentist, being told by an apprentice dentist what to do when you're already a dentist. I'm reaching a point now where I'm sorry, but if I've got a, an opinion with someone, I will say it. Can we carry no, on? No, but I'm just saying. Yeah, I'm just saying. Can so we say I'm not doing wrong, yeah. right? Oh, I, I may not do it. What just happened in there is not the best of times to do it because I want to take the time to learn something. I didn't say she wasn't doing well. I'm not I'm not saying. Saying. No, I haven't, I haven't, said, I haven't, I haven't said, said, I haven't said she hasn't I've got things that. to do. Have a pleasant evening. Catch you next time. next time they say something. In the choir. Yeah, not only me then. No, not only you then. Right, That's what I'm saying. People in the choir. I was sat there and I had some open people in the choir. Yeah. Yeah. Can you gather round, please? Back in Verona, Ivor's choir have finished work for the day and there are two excursions for people to choose from. For those who would like, we're going to go on a musical, cultural tour of this beautiful city. The other one's a, a mystery tour, a, a small booze cruise. <laughs> I think that the tour of this wonderful city would show a greater commitment to the idea that you want to be singers of classical music, because we can all get drunk. <laughs> I'm going on a bees cruise. <laughs> I'm not going walking, not in these. I'm going on a bees cruise. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Marina, and she's going to take us on a small, musically-based tour of this beautiful city. Most of the choir have chosen Ivor's musical trip. And we're standing right by the Philharmonic Theatre. Oh, yes. It's like, wow. It's like a tree's growing out of it. How absolutely lovely. A dozen choristers have decided to lubricate their vocal cords at the local vineyard. I would really, really <laughs> like to get a job here. Swish it round your mouth like you would mouthwash, but swallow. I think it's really one of the greatest places ever to work. <laughs> Not drunk, we're just having a good time. <laughs> this is what we call Juliet House Courtyard. We can drink booze till the high heavens when we're back in England. Better than um, going out for a wine testing, was it? Mm, yes. How many times do you get to come to Italy? All the others that go on the other trip do not know what they're missing. Can I buy um, six bottles of that, darling? Here. Here. Thank you so much. We'll have that on the way back home. <laughs> Go anywhere without me because I've got the wine. Thank you so much. See, Ma. Oh, hello, darling. It's only me. I know you're feeling really ill. Can I come in? Are you okay? Are you okay? Soprano Seema fell sick yesterday and has been holed up in a hotel room ever since. Okay. What have you been doing all day? I'm just relaxing. I went to sleep for a little while. And then I got back up and I was like, oh, I'm really bored. <laughs> and then I was, I felt like I was missing out. What did you do? And I couldn't Do you really want me it. to tell you what we did? Oh, go on, just tell me. Was it really good? Well, I thought so. OK, well, we went in um, the amphitheatre and things like that. Oh. And we went to um, the place where Mozart first performed at the age of 13. 
Um, but everyone's going to have photos and things like that anyway. And then um, <laughs> I feel really guilty telling you all this. Oh, no. No, look. At the end of the day, it's matter. not your fault. It's not your fault, right? You were ill at the end of the day. Seema's missed out in Italy because of her illness, but for the Royal Albert Hall concert, Ivor has understudies or covers on standby. But as the day rounds off with drinks in the hotel bar, covers Taja and Zoe are looking more like rivals than best friends. You're singing constantly. You're like in front of Ivor. Do you know what I mean? That ain't me. You've got more of a chance than me. That's what I'm saying. I know I've been a bit like in Ivor's face or in everybody's face, like singing tonight. No, you, like, but we've you've all sung been because buzzing you've enjoyed of a singing. That has happened tonight. And you felt confident enough to yeah, go out there and sing. I think if, you're in the, if I was in the covers, I'd be insecure. A lot of them want to prove themselves. You know, they want to, when they've got that confidence where they've worked with us, they've had a laugh, now they know people and they feel comfortable singing without the nerves of the audition, which might have stopped their chances of getting through, they're going to sing. You know, I would. Sympathetic to Zoe, Mackenzie tries to make her feel better. You felt like you had a good voice and you knew you could do it and you enjoyed it. And she should never, ever, ever put you down for that. If she was a true friend, right, she would have thought, that's my mate, she's enjoying herself. Listen to her sing, you know. Maybe she wishes she could sing like that. I made it to Upstairs, the other covers, Candice and Taja, are in agreement about their rival. Like she sang on the back of the bus. Somebody has said, oh, your voice is, your voice is very nice. And that's it. Yeah. She hasn't stopped since. Blatantly, people that are putting in Ivor's face the good notes are going to be the ones that have got more of a chance than I have, just because I ain't got the confidence to go, la, you know, whatever the note is. I'm just like you. I, I've got voice, but I'm not an ass. Liquor. <laughs> Blatantly, she's got more of a chance than I have because she's, like, in his face. When you're a cover, you obviously don't feel that good because you don't know whether you're going to get a chance or you're not going to get a chance. And like I, like I was said, you know, if they prove themselves, they could get a place in the choir. And if someone in the choir isn't working hard enough, then they could take their place sort of thing. And that's a distinct possibility, with some choir members partying late into the night, just before their first big performance. Today, the choir aimed to wow the Italian crowd. Uh, la, la, la. <laughs> Some people were up drinking until 4 a.m., despite having their first live performance in a matter of hours. My voice is feeling a bit husky this morning. Um, it's not going to be too great in there. I hope we have a real good warm up because I think I need it. Oh, I think we're paying for our night out last night. Right, this is where I have to put my trust in you. Really concentrate. I, I have to trust that in 35 minutes we can do this. Previously in the UK, the choir learnt the Neapolitan song O Sole Mio. Ivor has this one rehearsal to perfect it. One and two and one. It's, um, it sounds dreadful. It has nothing to recommend itself to. It, it's nothing nice about it at all. Ladies and gentlemen, can I just say, the reason you're here is to sing. I don't care how late you stay out, how, whatever you do, but as long as you can sing the next day. Because th we're here to sing. We're not here to sort of go, sorry, Ivor, I can't actually do the thing you really wanted me to do, because it's pathetic. With time running out, can Ivor's choir pick themselves up and be ready to perform live in front of a tough Italian crowd? Happy face, happy face. Please don't be scared. I need your full concentration and good luck. In 
Italy, the choir from the Blackbird Lee's housing estate have been learning how to become classical singers, but squabbling and partying are threatening the success of the trip. I think the fact that everybody last night, including myself, stayed up to early hours of this morning, smoked like troopers, drank like fishes, basically now we're all sort of feeling it. The guest soloist, professional tenor Franco Malapena, is prepared, but Ivers amateurs are running out of time. Um, you should be aware of the words now. We've got 20 minutes. Oh, no. Come on, give it, give it, perform. And you hold, absolutely hold with me. Fast notes are not with me, and I'm still clicking. Too flat. Okay, that's not together. Okay, I don't really listen. Good, good, good. They're better. Passion in the face. Not bad, not bad. Despite the struggle, Ivor eventually gets the choir to sound as he'd like. Right. Fantastic. That's it for our rehearsal. But in two hours' time, we are performing this in the main square next to the arena with Franco. Yeah. Be afraid, be very afraid. Six weeks in, the choir are halfway through their training. Today's debut could single whether or not they have what it takes to succeed at the Royal Albert Hall. I have some concerns that they're not going to make it today. This morning's rehearsal was a bit rubbish. Right. However, let's hope for a minor miracle. This is daunting, and I can have to sing out here in front of all these Italian people. You know, yeah, it's bloody nervous, man. That's scary. They boo Pavarotti. <laughs> Yeah. Why not? You're singing the solo in that bit. Really don't have a that clue high what high that note no actually it's is. It's Mistakes today could potentially affect people's inclusion in the choir. There are a couple of people who came on the Italy trip from the covers who are stronger than members of the choir. Nobody's place is safe. If people aren't committed to the project, well, we'll just have to say sorry, but bye bye. Whilst the covers are impressing either, choir member Mackenzie is struggling. Can you, yeah, I can't even speak. Oh, babe, come on. Oh, come on. If you, I know it sounds really stupid, if you actually tried pushing, that. pushing past that gravelliness, I know it sounds silly, if you actually tried pushing... I'm okay. scared to, of the noise that it might make. Today, a lot of people have panicked, but we are here to sing. So the reality is we're doing what we're supposed to be doing. But what scares people is now it's there's an audience, there's a live audience, and that kind of freaks a lot of people out. And myself. <laughs> Franco Malapena has travelled across Italy to be here as a favour to Iva. The maestro gives his final instructions. I'll start one more time. You really must actually use your brains at this point. Uh, please, everybody, concentrate. Happy face, happy face. Please don't be scared. I need your full concentration and good luck. You just didn't watch me. <coughs> make me. You make me look like a complete fool. He felt let down, but I tell you, how, 
we felt worse. When Ivan looked like that, I was crushed. That was a 40-man breakdown there. No one has ever made me feel like that. I wanted the ground to open up. You just said yeah? you, made, you made me look like a fool. Well, right, we but, and we, we did. We looked like fools, fools ourselves. <sighs> they really messed it up for me. They just lost confidence. Very, very disappointed. So, yeah, very disappointed. Oh, I don't know what happened, man. Just, everybody just stopped singing, you know? I just wanted to run and hide, man. Just wanted to run and hide. I want to die right now. If looks could kill you. I want to die right now. Clearly disappointed by her own performance, Mackenzie has taken Ivor's sharp words to the choir to heart. I've heard from someone that you're uh, upset about what I did during the performance. I was trying my hardest, and then when someone does that and takes everything... <laughs> yeah, it annoyed me a lot. It hurts me that you're upset. But, frankly, we just messed it up. Messed it up and made me look really foolish. But we tried. But it, that's not... In the Albert Hall, you can't just try. No, but... If, if I ask you to do something, we need to do it. OK. Come here. <laughs> but we cannot go wrong in the Albert Hall. We cannot. I mean, I, I have conducted things in the Albert Hall that have nearly gone wrong, and believe me, I feel absolutely physically sick at the time, if it does, and I have no intention of feeling sick. Next week, it's the choir's dress rehearsal, and Ivor gets tough. You are bloody rubbish sometimes. The choir gets emotional. He's a thin god, man. And some tower above the rest. Yes! On their way to the Royal Albert Hall.